What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Hangout Spot, where you already know it's Real Talk Sports Talk, live from my man cave. It's your boy, Johnny. And let's talk boxing, because besides a lot of big fights coming up in the next couple of months, there's been a lot of recent developments about new fights that are coming out. You got rumors about potential fights happening. I mean, there's questionable decisions with sanctioning bodies and and guys that they're putting, you know, fights together with. I mean, just a bunch of stuff going on. So I got a special guest that is usually all over this type of stuff. He has his own boxing channel. In fact, he is from Fight Hook News. Let me introduce, without further ado, my boy, Jay Calderon from Fight Hook News. What's going on, my brother? Welcome to the Hangout Spot, man. What's going on? Thank you for having me on your show. Listen, man, it's a pleasure to have you there, man. You know, we've been rocking for a long time. And, um, and I know you know your boxing stuff, you know what I mean? And I follow you on YouTube, I follow you on Facebook, and usually when there's something that pops off, you're the first one to be able to report it <laughs> to all of us. <laughs> I want to say I appreciate you, and like I said, it's a pleasure to have you aboard, man. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. So listen, before we get into like a lot of these rumors and stuff that are, that are, that are popping, you know, because there's a lot of things, you know, that just, even today, you know, the last 24 hours, you know, with fights that have been announced. Let's talk about the ones that are on the docket. Specifically next Friday night, we got our first ever Amazon Prime pay-per-view. Who would have ever thought that we were going to say we'd be watching fights on Amazon Prime, right? I mean, Man. you're like me. You grew up watching boxing on HBO and Showtime, and now all of a sudden they're gone. And now you got the streaming platforms that are, uh, you know, that are taking over. So next Friday, it was supposed to be Keith Thurman against Tim Zhu for the 154-pound WBO title. Obviously, we all know that Keith Thurman suffered an injury in training, injuring his bicep. The fill-in, to everyone's surprise, was Sebastian Fundora, the towering inferno. But there are some questions as why a guy <laughs> that got knocked out cold, you know, in his last fight, now all of a sudden gets a shot, you know, at the WBO title. What was your first reaction when you heard about that? Well, first of all, you know, Keith Thurman, I'm a big fan of Keith Thurman, and I was hoping to see him get back in the ring. He's been out of the ring for two years. It's unfortunate that he got injured and he can't be in the fight anymore. Um, stylistically, this is a much more entertaining fight. You know, Thurman is a different type of fighter. He's smaller coming up in weight, but he's a mover. You know, the towering inferno, you know, Sebastian Fendora. This guy is like six five. He's a giant. He's he throws a lot of volume punching, and this guy he's a good fighter. He's a he's a solid fighter. He's a top contender in that division. But you know him coming into this fight, it's a great fight. It's still a great fight. You know, um, him getting the title shot, two belts on the line. I don't agree with that. That's boxing politics. You know, that has to do with the governing bodies being greedy. And wanting to get into that, you know, that cash flow of the Australian power that Zoo has and PBC involved with the situation as well. So, you know, the two belts on the line shouldn't be on the line. This should be a non-title fight. He was already on the card fighting for a vacant WBC title that he shouldn't have been fighting for. You know, he was fighting against the guy from the Ukraine. He shouldn't have been fighting for a title in that fight, but now he's in the main event fighting for two belts and he just got knocked out by Brian Mendoza. I mean, that was a vicious knockout and he's already, you know, in the mix. It should have been a non-title fight the way they had Keith fighting a non-title fight. They should have kept it like that. And it's still a great fight. It's going to be an action packed fight and I can't wait. I agree. Um, I don't. I don't necessarily have a problem with him being the opponent. Like I said, I mean, just he, he fights at the same weight division. Um, but for for the titles, yeah, I, I I question that, right? And like you said, the politics of boxing once again, you know, rears his ugly head. But you mentioned a couple of things that uh, that resonated. Number one, I agree. I think it's going to be an entertaining fight because of the styles. And I put out a short video, you know, letting the fans know that. Um, you know, Sebastian Fundora, as big as he is, as tall as he is, as rangy as he is, he doesn't fight like a tall guy. He fights like a short guy. He likes to mix it up in the pocket. So, and we all know how Tim Zhu, I mean, Tim Zhu is, is an old, old school throwback fighter. A lot of people compare him to a Mexican style of a fighter, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to want to go in there and bang it out. So for as long as it lasts, 
I think I think it could be a much more entertaining fight, or mm. or the word that I would use, and it's the same word that I've used for the Roly Pipple fight. I think it's going to be a fun fight, um, but I'm not sure. Like I said, unless Sebastian Fundora learned from his last experience. I mean, the thing with him too that I notice is when, and you correct me if I'm wrong, when when he's in the pocket, you know, and he's mixing it up, he has a tendency to leave his chin out there, you know, and and he's just tailored to me. He's just tailor made for a guy you know, like Tim Zeus uh, style. What do you think about that? Yeah, and he's definitely going to get caught with them shots from Tim Zoo because Tim Zoo he'll walk you down. He'll break you down inside. He has excellent punching power and he has excellent timing. So he's going to get to Fandora sooner or later. And Fandora does not use his height and reach. As big as this guy is, you know, you've seen from the videos of them doing the face-off I mean, that's a crazy size advantage that he has over him. If he had a really good solid jab, it will be a nightmare for Tim Zhu to even get in if he had a solid jab, but he doesn't use it. So once Tim Zhu gets close enough, he's going to catch him with them shots, especially with them looping right hands. Once he lays them, he's, he's going to put them out just the way Brian Mendoza was able to catch him and knock him out. It's going to be like a, another replay of that fight right there. Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. It really is. As far as the card in, in, in totality, I was looking at it, and I think it's going to be a pretty fun card. Yeah, excellent I think it's gonna be, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a pretty good card. I mean, even even the fight before the main card, you got Elijah Garcia against Kyron Davis. I think that's mm -hmm. a pretty interesting match. Great and, prospect. Uh, and, yeah, great prospect. And then you know Julio Cesar Martinez in the opener. You know, um, you know he's fighting Angelino Cordova. You know, for his WBC flyweight belt, you got Brian Mendoza. Up, well, Brian Mendoza, he steps in for Sebastian Fundora. He was supposed to fight uh, uh, Boyachuk, right? Right. Boyachuk, they're fighting for the interim title now. So, again, Brian mm -hmm. Mendoza's coming off a loss to Tim Zhu, and he gets a title shot. So, a lot of questionable stuff there. But at the end of the day, even with the Roley and Pitbull uh, fight, which which I think has a tendency to steal the show based on styles, I think these guys are going to go in there and they're going to bang it out street style. You also got Lara on the card too. Lara is going to be on. The card. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's a good, it, it's a good debut for PBC on Amazon. But it, you know, I, I'm, I'm interesting to see how, how this whole thing plays out. But it uh, shouldn't be pay per view though. It shouldn't be yeah. a pay per view fight. I mean, Not they, right. they, they're talking about doing 12 to 14 events, and some of them are going to be a mixture of pay per view fights, and some of them are going to be on Amazon Prime for the subscribers of. Amazon Prime. So that first one should have been an introduction for all the subscribers of Amazon Prime to introduce them to boxing on Amazon Prime. But, you know, they just made it a pay-per-view because they put too much money into it. Keith Thurman, 12 days out, had to pull out of the fight. You know, they kept it as a pay-per-view. It's, it's going to bomb. It's going to bomb as a pay-per-view because even though it's a really good card, I, Keith Thurman was going to sell that fight you know, and they got two Australians on that fight. The guy that's fighting Laura and then also um, Tim Zhu, which they're going to get a lot of that pay-per-view from Australia because Amazon Prime reaches worldwide, you know. So it's going to be, I think it's not going to do great. It's going to yeah. be a great, it's going to be a great lineup, a great night of fights for us boxing fans. But as far as business-wise, I don't think it's going to do well. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good point, especially with with being the first fight on the platform. You're right. You know, you would probably expect it, it to be free so that you can kind of, you know, you can you can get the buy in from the public. Uh, once again, I'm here with Jay Calderon from Fight Hook News. Let's switch gears a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about Canelo because there's a lot of there's a lot of rumblings going on. Right. So it's been announced the fight that he's going to fight May 4th, Cinco de Mayo weekend. That's not a surprise against Jaime Munguia, uh, which realistically isn't a surprise either. You know, once once the rumblings were out there that he wasn't going to fight David Benavidez, where it was, it was either going to be Munguia, Berlanga, or Charlo. So when I first heard about this fight, you know, obviously I was disappointed because like any other fight fan, I want to see him fight David Benavidez. But then now that I look at it, it's, a, it's an interesting fight. I mean, it really is. I, you know, Mexico against Mexico. So, it, you know, it's a big fight, you know, for the country. Munguia is going to go in there. He's going to try to bang it out. He's the younger guy. I, I don't know if he's ready for this type of animal, but um, but he's been calling him out, you know, so I give him props for that, wanting a big fight. 
what do you what do you what do you make on Canelo's movement though? Because you know, obviously, it, it looks like he wants no part of Benavidez. Like he'll say he doesn't want to fight Benavidez or he doesn't need anything to prove, and then he says if he gets one hundred and fifty to two hundred million dollars, he'll fight. Right. What's going on with that, man? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, Canelo is already set in stone a Hall of Famer. He's gonna be into the Hall of Fame. He's had a long career. Started at the age of 15 as a professional over in Mexico, drew that following, came to the United States. He was on cards like Mayweather, Cotto, you know, and he developed. He fought guys like Sugar Shane Mosley, a lot of good fights. Miguel Cotto, he fought Galani Golovkin, Triple G, you know, a lot of good fighters he's been in the ring with. And he's built his resume up and he deserves to pick and choose who he wants to fight. You know, I'm not a huge Canelo fan. I'm, I, I like him. He's not my favorite fighter. You know, I don't I don't hold him as high regards as other people do. But he's an excellent fighter. He's a good fighter. He's proven himself time and time again. Of course, he's ducking David Benavidez. That's 100%. David Benavidez deserves that shot more than anyone else out there. Nobody deserves a shot more than David Benavidez. He's the number one 168-pound super middleweight in the world. He's a two-time world champion in there. He's an interim world champion. He deserves that shot. And for some reason, Canelo Alvarez, you know, he's looking at a younger man that's bigger than him, that weighs 25 pounds. He let it be known that he weighs 25 pounds heavier than him. You know, he throws a high volume of punches. This guy is a machine. He is truly a monster. And Canelo Alvarez, he's, he's trying to wait him out to see how much money he could get. You know, by throwing numbers out there that are so outlandish and, and, and crazy. But in the same sense, you just saw David Benavides as of today make a plea with um, his excellency from Saudi Arabia, you know, uh, Turkey Ayesha, I believe his name is. He just said that he's willing to fight in Saudi Arabia, you know, to, to, to have them put up the money for the fight. And he's willing to donate a portion of his, you know, earnings to whatever cha charity that they want for children across the world. And he even said, to put the punctuation on it, he even said that if he loses, he'll donate his entire purse to whatever charity that, you know, they choose to across the world. You know, so that's a big statement. You know, I mean, that's a big statement by David Benavides. It's, it's all over social media. This is coming from David Benavides's own social media account. That's a statement right there. He wants that fight. Wow. I mean, I, I didn't know that. I mean, but like I said, you're all over it, man. That's that, that's a huge statement. That's a huge statement. So does this fight happen? I'm hoping it does in September. You know, right now he's 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 putting Canelo is putting the pressure on PBC and other people that are players in the game to produce the money to make this fight happen because everyone wants to see this fight. You know what I mean? And, you know, it's kind of like a blueprint of what Floyd did with, with Pacquiao. You know, I know there's a lot of fault on both sides, you know, Pacquiao and Floyd, why that fight took place six, six years later, but it, it took so long that people were starving for that fight. It was such a big fight, and look how big it, it winded up being. It wasn't a great fight at all, but a lot of people, you know, spent that money. I, I think it was like $100 for the pay-per-view in order to see it and everything like that. I mean, it made tremendous amount of money. So, you know, Kellerno is a smart dude. You know, he's he's waiting it out. He got guys like The Zone jumping in. He got guys like PBC jumping in. And if he could get Saudi Arabia to jump in, he might see close to $100 million for, for a fight. For sure. Wow. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, the way he moves right now, you know, from a business perspective, kind of reminds you of Floyd. Uh, but I guess at the end of the day, when your boxing's biggest biggest cash cow, you can you can move and, and make those decisions, right? Um, I'll put you on a spot real quick. Is Canelo the the greatest Mexican fighter ever? It's hard, man. It's hard. Like I say, my favorite Mexican fighter is Juan Manuel Marquez. You know, the man is a warrior. You know, but you got to give Canelo his props. You know, he, I think he surpassed Julio Cesar Chavez because Chavez is considered the greatest Mexican fighter of all time, you know, but the 89 fights that he had before losing, 
you know, a lot of them were cab drivers. You know, he had he had some good fighters in between that were really good fights, you know, the Mildred Taylors and Pernell Whitaker and all of those guys. But Canelo, you know, being a four division weight champion, an undisputed champion, you know, this guy could be possibly the greatest Mexican fighter. You know, he might have surpassed them. I hear that. And that's hard for me to hear because I'm 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 a big Julio Cesar Chavez fan. I mean, me growing up. What do you see happening in that fight between uh, Mungia? I, I think Canelo um, beats him. He probably stops him, if not by decision, but he wins that fight. You know, Mungia is working with Freddie Roach, so we saw an improvement from when he was working with Eric Morales. You know, he didn't look that great against Demonchenko. I mean, it was a great fight. It was a fight of the year type candidate fight. But uh, I think Freddie Roach has added something to his game and that's going to be interesting to see on fight night. You know, what type of game plan do they have? Does he become much better? Is Canelo really declining? And can he seize the moment? Because he's been waiting for this fight ever since he moved up to 160 pounds when he was a middleweight. He was chasing Triple G and Canelo for a big fight opportunity when a lot of people really didn't know who he was. And, you know, he avoided Demetrius Andre who was the champion in that weight class, and he was the mandatory. He avoided Jamal Charlo, who was the WBC champion, and he was the mandatory for him as well. So he didn't take those dangerous fights, and he gets a lot of slack because of he didn't take those fights, and he just waited for the big payday against Triple G and Canelo. But now, fast forward, you know, the guy got 40-something fights in. You know, he's grown. He's older. He's more mature, more experienced. Now he has a great trainer in his camp. He's coming off a great performance against John Ryder. This might be the right time while Canelo's getting old that he might shock a lot of people on fight night. But I feel that Canelo Alvarez is going to win that fight, possibly late round stoppage or decision. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, you know, the type of fighters that give Canelo problems are guys that are going to move around. And, you know, Munguia is not going to be hard to find. So let's switch gears. Um, I'm really interested to hear what, what you think about Tank Davis, right? Because I know on some of our boxing chats, I mean, that's a hot topic. Let me start by saying I'm I'm, I'm a Tank Davis fan. I, I, I do. I, I like Tank Davis as a fighter. Um, you know, I think he's exciting. I, I, I don't think he gets enough credit based on his resume, and that's his own fault. You know, um, I'm just disappointed. You know, when I throw stuff out there about Tank, I'm, I'm like any other fan. I just want to see him fight the top names because I think he's that good. And he needs mm -hmm. to start to challenge himself. He's not getting any younger either. So the announcement recently is that he's fighting Frank Martin. I believe that's going to be sometime in May or, or June. June. Um, if I'm mistaken, right? They have not. June 15th. June 15th. Okay. So they did nail June 15th is the day. Right. So what do you what do you what do you make on his movement? You know, I mean, Frank Martin's a good fighter. You know, he's a good technical fighter. He's got some skills, but he's not a hard puncher. Um what do, you, what do you think about that fight and, and, and how Tank has been moving as far as his career? Personally, I like the fight. It's a really good fight. You know what I mean? No knock on Frank Martin. We want to see, you know, Tank versus the best, like you said. You know, this has been a long time. You know, I respect Tank as a fighter. He has excellent boxing skills, which a lot of people just look at the knockouts. He has great power. You know, he hurts people. But the man can box. He can use his jab. He knows how to use his footwork. You know, he has good defensive skills. The man is an all-around good, solid fighter, and he's super talented. He's young. We've watched him grow. We've seen Mayweather and Al Heyman do a phenomenal job in, you know, promoting this young man into a superstar. You know, they call him the face of boxing. He's not really the face of boxing because Canelo is still the face of boxing, but he's right there. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a ticket seller. He puts butts in, 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 in those arenas, and he's a very entertaining and exciting fighter. So the he Frank could, Martin fight. He's a boxing. The, the Frank Martin fight is, is a very good fight. Frank Martin is a top contender. You know, he's an excellent boxer. His power is not that big, but the, the, the man, could he could crack a little, you know, but it's going to be an entertaining. It's going to be a really good fight. There's There's been talk about sparring sessions like, all these other gym wars that have been going on with, you know, him and Tank, you know, getting the best of each other and sparring. We haven't seen no footage of that. But, you know, we want to see Tank against Devin Haney. 
We want to see Tank against the other champions at 135 pounds. You know, Lomachenko is about to fight Cambosis, and he's about the favorite to beat Cambosis for that IBF lightweight title, and he becomes a two-time lightweight champion. As old as he is, he's still a viable contender for Tank because he just gave Devin Haney hell, and now if he becomes champion again, he's right in the mix, and Tank hasn't fought this man I think since 2015, 2016, they've been calling for that fight and they've been stalling it and stalling it, making a thousand excuses why they can't make that fight. And that fight should have happened years ago. But now is the time while he's old, have that fight at least. You know, at least give us the Shakur Stevenson, who's probably the best in the division skill wise, you know, who's a WBC champion. Have that fight with Shakur Stevenson. These fights need to be made in his own weight division. And if you could go up to 140 to fight, you know, Barrios and everything, who's a much bigger guy than Devin Haney as far as size-wise, you know, you can fight a Devin Haney. You know, Devin Haney is a, is a huge fight between Tank and him. And that's a fight that fans really, truly want to see. You know, there's a lot of argument about it. We saw the sparring session that they had. Tank, Tank needs to fight these guys you know it's, it's a good fight with frank martin but after that you need to fight one of the top guys at least theofimo lopez somebody all uh, right you listen you nailed it you know and that's that's been my biggest disappointment about tank you know i think he has the skills and can beat any of those guys but i mean if you're not fighting them you know how are you going to prove that right um the fight that i want to see it's funny you brought that up because that lomachenko fight yeah we wanted to see that years and years ago and you know they they I, I, Mayweather's people and, and and they weren't even talking about it like you know they would turn the other cheek when it was mentioned to them. Um, maybe it's a fight that happens now because Lomachenko is you know obviously you know that latter part of his career. But the fight that I want to see is I want to see him fight Shakur. I mean I think mm -hmm. I think that would be a tremendous fight. They're both in the same division. They need to stop playing games, you know, and get this thing on because Tank Tank Davis is that good. Now he fought Ryan Garcia. And, you know, and he beat Ryan Garcia, and they made a ton of cash doing that. Switching gears here now to Ryan. Listen, when this fight was announced against Devin Haney, you know, I I was, you know, I was all for it. I was intrigued by it because you got two guys that are familiar with each other. They fought six times in the amateurs, you know, so now they're going to duke it out basically as game seven, you know, of a seven-game series, winner take all, right? And then the press conferences started, you know, and <laughs> – I didn't feel so confident that this fight was going to happen, you know, based on, you know, Ryan's behavior. He's, it's been erratic. I mean, it's to me, the way I'm looking at it, he's going through a lot of mental issues. And I, personally, I don't believe that he should be fighting this fight. In fact, um, and you know, we've had conversations off the record. You know, I was planning on going to that fight and meeting you there because I know mm -hmm. that you're going to be there live. But once I saw those press conferences, man, the first thing I think I texted you was, did you have insurance for your ticket? Because <laughs> unless you want to see Haney fight Arnold Barboza, I don't know if uh, if Ryan's going to be there. Nah. But but he's been training, putting out videos. He's in Texas. You know, the funny thing about those videos is that you will see uh, one video where he looks pretty sharp. And then the next day you'll see a video where he's crying all over the place and he's having mental breakdowns and people don't love him. I, I don't know what's going on with this guy, but realistically speaking, I don't think he should fight. What do you think is going to happen on fight night if he does happen to make it? Because again, I'm 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 going to take this down to the wire, man. I mean, I, I don't think that he's going to make it. I, I'm praying that he does make it because I did buy my ticket. I'm definitely going to be in the building. I'm a huge fan of you know Devin Haney and you know. I like Ryan, but I'm not a believer of Ryan. Ryan has a great, excellent amateur background. He was a 12-time champion, 15-time champion nationals. And, you know, he has the hand speed. He has the punching power. He's a good fighter to beat everybody except the elite. You know, he proved it against Tank Davis when he fought that fight with Tank Davis. I knew that Tank was going to beat him and was going to stop him. And... Tank showed that he was levels above Ryan Garcia. And that's exactly what Devin Haney is going to do. You know, Devin Haney, great jab, excellent body puncher. This guy is a very good, skillful boxer. And he's a little bit stronger at 140. You saw when he dropped Regis Progre and everything. He has pop, you know. So I believe that it's going to be a good fight. You know, Tank, 
Um, Ryan has, you know, that 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 whole thing that went saying that he had the hydration clause and everything. And that's the reason why he lost all those excuses that he came up with. Well, he has no hydration clause in this fight. He's going to be at full capacity, 140. He's going to be big. He's probably going to be a welterweight when he steps into the ring against Devin Haney. You know, Haney might be like a junior middleweight when he steps in the ring. But these guys are evenly matched as far as size-wise. And I believe that the skill level of Haney is better than Ryan. And I see Ryan, you know, losing probably by stoppage late. You probably get beat up down the road and everything like that. I think this whole thing is an, is, is an act. You know, he has a huge following in social media. I think 8 million people follow him. And even though he's claimed mental health and everything, I know mental health is real out there. You know, one thing Steven Espinosa, of, um, the former head of Showtime, he said one thing. He goes, I know the people around Ryan. He goes, I know them very well. And they wouldn't put him in jeopardy. You know, they didn't feel like he was, you know, not ready to be in this fight. So that leads me to believe that this is all to try to draw attention to this fight and to see people, you know, see him make it to the fight and then ticket sales will pick up by the time fight week comes. I think a lot of people are going to buy last minute tickets and then the pay-per-view I think is going to do very well, you know, so... I think I think you know what Steve Espinosa said was was correct. You know, Derek James is a is a highly you know trainer out there, trainer of the year. He's not gonna let his fighter go out there if he's not prepared. You know, what I mean, he's gonna pull out of the fight. You know, I don't care how much money is involved and everything. These guys like Oscar De La Hoya and all of them, I don't think they're gonna send Ryan out there to 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 get knocked out and not be in the right state of mind. You know, so I believe he's training hard. I believe he's focused. But I think a lot of this is just antics so that he could bring attention towards this fight. Wow. I mean, yeah, and, and it very well could be. I mean, but if he's doing it to, to draw attention to the fight, first of all, I, that's bizarre to me because this fight doesn't really need that type of attack. It's going to sell. I believe that it's going to sell. There's one thing I can tell you about Ryan, and I agree with everything you say, by, by the way. Well, sell more. <laughs> it's a bizarre no. way. Remember, we're living, we're living in the Jake Paul era, the wow. Jake Paul era. You know what I mean? We're, we're living in the Misfits era with KIS, you know, KSI, whatever his name is. Yeah. You know, we're living in that era. So a lot of the traditional boxing cell, like as a fight fan, they're trying to go outside the scope of hardcore boxing fans. They're trying to sell more. Interesting. Very, very interesting take. Well, let me tell you something. If, if that's what's happening, he got me fooled because he he looks he looks lost, <laughs> like totally unstable. But um, listen, at the end of the day, like I said, I'll stick by it. I I, I didn't think that this was needed. I, I thought this fight was going to sell from the get go because obviously Haney is is one of the best fighters in the world. Powerful pound and Ryan Garcia, you know, he sells fights. You know, he has a huge following. I agree with you. He's a good fighter that will probably not be able to beat the elite guys, at least not yet. I give him credit, though, and I know this is something that you brought 100%. up on your channel, right? because at least he's fighting the elite guys. I mean, he was calling out Tank Davis for years. And then it kind of opened the doors. There, there were a couple of other big fights that happened after that. So it was almost like the trendsetter. You brought up a good point in your channel the other day, a question that you asked. If he does end up fight, you know, obviously, if he does end up fighting Haney, whether it's win or lose, he fought Tank. If he fights Shakur and he fights Teofimo Lopez, those are the names that he has said that he wants to fight before his career is over. In fact, he also said he wants a rematch with Tank with no, with no you know, dehydration clauses. Do you, can, do you give him credit for at least stepping up to the plate and wanting to fight the big guys, whether he wins or loses? Listen, of course, you know what I mean? that This is what it's about. You know, there's a lot of people nowadays in any sport, whether it's basketball, LeBron James, or or boxing, you know, very critical times that we live in. You know, people judge so much in this world that we live in right now. And if you look at the history of Muhammad Ali taking losses, Sugar Ray Leonard taking losses, somebody the other day was making a comment about the great Roberto Duran that he lost basically his biggest fights. You know, he lost against Marvin Hagler. He quit against Sugar Ray Leonard and he got stopped and knocked out cold 
by Tommy Hearns, you know, and they trashed him. A great legend like that, they trashed, you know what I mean? So these are the times that we're living in. So, you know, like I said, Ryan is good and he can become a world champion, you know, against someone else. You know, he could probably beat a Kambosis, you know, he could probably, you know, win against, you know, someone else that's 140, somebody like Roley. You know, those guys he could beat and become world champions and have a nice career. But when it comes to the elite, guys like Oscar De La Hoya didn't win his biggest fights. You know, whether we want to admit it or not, you know, he did beat Trinidad, but Trinidad was the one that got the victory. You know, in our eyes, we felt that, you know, De La Hoya threw away the fight, but Trinidad right. got the victory. He got stopped by Bernard Hopkins. He lost twice to Sugar Shane Mosley. You know, so these fights, he lost to Floyd Mayweather. Pacquiao destroyed him. So he lost his biggest fights of his career, but he still had a great career. And the one thing that everyone gives Oscar De La Hoya credit for, he ducked no one. He fought Correct. everyone. So Absolutely. Ryan Garcia can have the same type of career where he becomes a world champion. He, he beats a couple of good fighters, but he doesn't win against the elite fighters. But I give him credit. You know, he he is trying to put his name out there and he looks like he wants to fight for legacy. Um, but at this point, I, I, he really needs to get his head screwed on. Right. You know, if if this is not an act, like you say, um, we're going to find out know. on fight night. We're going to find out. We, we're going to see who's right. But a uh, lot of good stuff, a lot of good uh, stuff that has come out in the last 24 hours, man. I mean, you got uh, word that, you know, Broner. Is going to be coming back out in the scene. I'm hearing you got uh, Matias Bam Estrada, uh, yeah, Bam versus Estrada. That's going to be cool. What other what other things are you hearing in the uh, you know in the rumor mill? Or fights well, they just made an announcement tonight. I mean, they made an announcement today earlier that Deontay Wilder. You know, we knew he was going to be in a big fight. He was supposed to fight Joe Joyce. I know that was the word that I was getting, but the Saudi Arabia really wanted uh, Jillian Zhang to be the opponent. And that was the fight that they were pushing for. He had a rematch clause with um, Joseph Parker, but they winded up getting him to not take the rematch against Joseph Parker and go into a fight against Deontay Wilder. And that's a great heavyweight fight. Yeah, I think that's going to be a good one. That card, I think that card, they're going to be building that card up. I think it could be a oh, really good card. It's beautiful. That's that's the undercard of uh, Demetrius Bevo versus Arthur Bedevine for the undisputed light heavyweight crown on June 1st in Saudi Arabia. And then they also announced to um, Flip Herkowicz, who's another heavyweight contender that's going to be fighting British heavyweight Daniel Dubois. That's a good fight right there against two big guys. So, you know, it's an interesting card. Also, I believe Raymond Ford, who just became the featherweight champion of the WBA at 126, he's going to be fighting Nick Ball, who just had a fight with Ray, Vasquez, Ray Vargas. And that fight right there was a good fight that I thought Nick Ball won, but now he's going to have another opportunity to fight for a world title. And they haven't announced that yet, but Raymond Ford versus Nick Ball is another excellent fight on a stacked card. They they doing big things over there, man. I just wish the time, man. I mean, I can't get, to, get used to watching fights on Saturday during the day. I like to watch them at 11.30, midnight, the main event. I mean, that's just what, you know, I, I, I just love, you know, Saturday night fights. But uh, you're right. I think the Nick Ball... Raymond Raymond Ford fight is gonna is gonna be a really that's a sneaky really good fight good. that uh, that's gonna go under the radar and I can't wait for the Bavol, uh but better be fight for all four titles mm -hmm. at one seventy five I think that's who you, got, who you got who you got in that fight I think I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna lean towards Bavol. I do I mean if he can I mean you know that Better Beef is gonna apply that pressure obviously um, but I, I I look at Bavol's performance against Canelo, and I know there's two there's two different styles between Better Beef and Canelo. But I was mm -hmm. just I was just so impressed with 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 how he fought that fight. It's it's just hard for me to pick against him, but it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be it's gonna be very very interesting. But uh, you got, you got Bavol too. Yeah. Okay. Decision. It has been an absolute blast, you know, chopping it up with you here. But uh, you know, for all our viewers, for my viewers and yours, I mean, where where can we find you on social media, man, if we want up-to-the-date boxing news? Well, you can follow me, you know, Fight Hook News, Jay Calderon Boxing Talk. Got you, got me on social media as far as YouTube. Got me on Twitter. 
Got me also on uh, Fight Hook News 1 on Instagram. Got the group page and Facebook. J. Calderon, Fight Hook News. That's what I'm talking about. I've been following you for a long time, man. And for the viewers, man, if you want up to the date, you know, boxing news, you know, insight, interviews. I know, you know, you do a lot of good interviews with a lot of these fighters. You know, make sure you tune in to, uh, to Fight Hook News, my boy J. Calderon. And as always, if you're new to watching my videos, Please subscribe. This is how we do it up here in the Hangout Spot. Make sure you're alone for the ride. And as always, I appreciate the support. For Jay Calderon, Fight Hook News, this is your boy Johnny signing out from the Hangout Spot. And Thank I'll you talk for having to you. me. You got it, brother.